Creating privacy in your outdoor space is one of the top considerations that I personally make when I'm designing a landscape for someone. So in this video, I wanna cover some of the common mistakes that I see homeowners making and how to actually fix those. My name is Amy and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners design landscapes that are uniquely you. So let's get into these top privacy mistakes right away. Mistake number six is not actually planning for privacy. And I've noticed this a lot that not having the privacy that you want in your outdoor space can actually prevent you from using it as much as you'd like. So it's a really important thing to think about. And there's two different types of privacy that you may need. One is from noise and one is just a visual privacy barrier. So think about what you actually need the privacy from. Uh, if you're trying to drown out the noise, you can do that with multiple rows of shrubs that can kind of absorb that noise coming in. Uh, water features are also really great for stopping the noise that you may be hearing. And there's also the visual privacy. So you have to think a little bit about where you're gonna be sitting or where you're gonna need the privacy. So if you're using your outdoor space for sunbathing or eating outside, those areas are the primary areas where you should focus the privacy. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big row of trees or shrubs like along the property line. You you may be able to get away with just blocking privacy from those certain seating areas and then your space will function well and you won't have to take up a lot of the area with just building a fortress around your house. Mistake number five is the incorrect placement of your privacy trees. So again, like I was saying before, you may not need privacy in your entire property, but if you do, that's totally fine too. You can block out your entire yard and just do a row of privacy trees. But again, also think about where you could position these trees to block the majority of the noise or the majority of the views that you're trying to prevent. And a lot of times those trees, when they're put a little bit closer to what you're trying to block, they don't need to be as large or as obstructive to views and other things on your property. Just make sure that once you choose the type of privacy tree or other structure that you need, specifically with tree placement, you need to know about how close you need to plant them in order to get that privacy that you need so that they're gonna grow and they're not gonna be too close where they're not healthy and they're not too far apart where they're not gonna give you the privacy that you need. And there's a lot of trees that will grow at different speeds and rates. So make sure you look that up too. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll see that fast growing trees aren't necessarily always the best option. Sometimes growing something that's fast growing while something slower growing grows in is a good option because the faster the tree grows, the shorter typically the lifespan of the tree is. So those fast growing trees may look great, but in 20 years, they may be at the end of their lifespan and you're gonna have to start all over with privacy at that point. Mistake number four is not considering winter privacy when you're choosing your privacy options for your yard. So this is a big thing, especially in colder climates where deciduous trees will drop their leaves in the winter. This can leave your entire landscape feeling really exposed. So you may wanna think about using evergreen shrubs or other pieces of structure that will remain in the winter. It's not necessarily a deal breaker. It really depends on how you specifically wanna use your landscape. If you're okay with it being open all winter, it's totally fine to not use evergreen shrubs. I do love the way they look in the winter and it adds a lot of winter interest to your landscape. But again, it's not necessarily a necessity. It's really up to the individual person. Another thing to consider is that if you do have evergreen trees or shrubs on your property, in the winter, there's a lot less light, so the evergreens can actually block the light from getting into your home, which could uh, kind of affect the heating costs of your home and things like that. So if you're okay with having it open in the winter, it's totally fine to use deciduous shrubs, deciduous trees or grasses or things like that, and then just have it open in the winter. Or if you want that beautiful winter interest and the privacy so that you can use your space into the colder months, you'll want to go with evergreens. If you're enjoying this video, I invite you to check out my three garden design secrets masterclass. It's a free video. It's about an hour long where I cover the top three mistakes that I see homeowners making and how to actually remedy those. And there's lots of really cool examples and beautiful garden photos along the way. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can check it out after this video. Mistake number three is not addressing noise on your property. So I know it's pretty easy to think about privacy and just automatically go to visual and who can see in and what you can see out. But it's really important to also think about noise when you're creating your privacy plan. This would be things like road noise or nosy, noisy neighbors or different other sounds that may be kind of annoying for you to hear while you're outside. So definitely consider noise when you're 
creating privacy. And like I said, a dense row of multiple shrubs can absorb quite a bit of noise. And water features, especially next to those areas where you want that privacy, can really block out a lot of noise and make your backyard space a really peaceful retreat where you're not having to hear all of the noise and the construction and what the neighbors are doing. So don't forget about planning for noise privacy. Mistake number two is poor placement of entertainment areas. So while you're creating privacy in your space, you should also be kind of planning your space around the most private areas that you have. And that's not just for privacy, but also for shade. So think about that when you're creating entertainment spaces for your property, where do you have the best options for shade in the time of day where you plan to entertain? Uh, where are people gonna feel comfortable and not like they're on display on your property? So definitely plan out those entertainment areas based on the most private areas of your space. I have an article that I'll link to in the description below about garden rooms and how to create garden rooms. And basically it just talks about how rooms, even if they're outdoor, have floors, they have walls and they have ceilings. So you could use these different features, especially the walls and the ceilings to create that privacy that you need. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have very large walls. This is just a rule of thumb, but there is the law of significant enclosure that says that people feel enclosed in an area when the height of the wall space is about one third of the floor space of the property. So if you have a patio that's a 12 by 12 foot space, you really only need a wall that's about four feet high, which is one third of that 12 feet in order for people to feel really comfortable and like they're in an enclosed area. So you don't really need those huge privacy trees all the time to create that feeling of enclosure, especially if you don't have a huge privacy issue where you have people looking in from an upstairs window or something like that. And mistake number one is waiting too long to address privacy issues in your property. And I know that privacy can be expensive, so it's a thing that kind of goes to the wayside. But if you really need a fence, you should really consider putting up a fence. Or I like to tell people that you can do privacy in phases. So if you want to plant some fast growing trees or some temporary fencing for a while while you wait for slower growing trees or while you're saving up for that better fencing. That's always an option to get that privacy right away. And then in the next few months or a few years, you can add to that privacy, take those faster growing trees out when the other ones grow in or when you save up the budget to put in that larger fencing. But privacy makes such a big difference in your property, especially if you want to use it to its fullest potential. So it's definitely important to to make that privacy happen as soon as you possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, I have lots of other mistakes videos on this channel, along with several other videos that address privacy in different ways. So I hope that you'll keep watching. I'll put a couple options right here for you and I'll see you over in that next video.